Hey guys, it's Adam from Lisa Pixel, and welcome back. Today I'd like to read an email to you, a short exchange I had with a fellow artist who, despite being professional and experienced and wise and strong, were at their wit's end. Life just hit them from too many angles and in a moment of desperation and desire for focus reached out to me in hopes that I could offer them some kind of feedback. And I did. I offered some feedback with respect to my qualifications, of course. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a counselor, I'm not a life coach, I'm an art teacher and a dad, right? But there was a lot of relatability in that message and that's why I did reply. And after replying and after our exchange, I kept thinking to myself, there's too much value in this exchange. The relatability of their message to me and what they were sharing with me uh, is something that I hear from so many different artists and so many different professionals. And I thought I'd, I'd like to know if I could share this with all of you. So I reached out to them and they very graciously said, of course you can. So to you who I had this exchange with, a thousand thank yous. So here's the email. Hi Adam, I've been experiencing an intense amount of burnout recently. Your videos have been pulling me through a lot of it. Thank you very much for that. It's kept my nose above water many late nights. However, recently the waterboarding is getting tough. I'm 30, a professional tattoo artist, and I'm just exhausted in every way. I can't draw for myself. I've been taking hard hit after hard hit lately, cancer scares, mild depression, and most recently, intense anxiety attacks. For the first time ever, I'm seeking out professional help in the next few months to try to rein in the mental problems, but I keep having this voice deep in the back of my head that tells me to run, to quit tattooing, run for the hills, find a new job in art, whether it's in video game design or freelancing, doing YouTube tutorials or opening a studio to tattoo from and running it for other artists. Heck, I've even considered getting a quote, normal job, but I am crippled by these new anxiety attacks. I don't really have any art friends or friends at all for that matter. Jesus, I hope this doesn't sound as parasocial as it probably does, but you seem to be a wise, ageless sentience of art. I feel lost and I don't know what to do. I feel like I'm at a crossroads in my life with 38 streets to choose from. However, instead of exploring them, I'm sitting in the middle, in the dirt, not even able to use a stick to draw on the ground with. And it's exhausting. I don't know if you have a video other than that burnout one that you that you made recently. It really helped quite a bit, by the way, or any advice on what I should do. Here's my reply. Hey there. It sounds to me like you're going through a pretty serious moment in your life. In all attempts not to diminish what you might be experiencing right now, I can say that I can relate very much I too have found myself in exactly that same position as you, looking at my life thinking, is this it? And being entirely dissatisfied with everything around me, my job, my health, my relationships, you name it. And note that you aren't only sharing a single problem with me today, you're sharing multiple layers of issues. Some of them are relatable, simple, professional frustrations. However, some are far more serious, serious health issues, physical, social, psychological, personal. Don't take your own complexity for granted. What might have gotten me through my own ordeals might not work for you because, well, many of the solutions that I found throughout my own challenges were tailored to my own unique and ever evolving reality. Your first step to healing is realizing that you aren't a two-dimensional being. You're complex, fascinating, and ever-evolving. I'm saying this because I recommend adopting this perspective for yourself, an objective and curious one. You're looking at this situation as someone who is, quote, dealing with these bad things, and 
you might be waiting for them to pass, waiting for that, quote, solution to your problem. In essence, you want your life to return to that neutral safe space where you remember being once. But that's in your past. And you need to look around at yourself as you are right now, today. Where you are in this exact moment is specific and needs to be analyzed with care and focus. Look at your sleep. Look at your diet, your relationships, your habits, your clothes, your health, both physical and mental, your social life. Look at it from an outsider's perspective and ask yourself, okay, what's the big picture here? Where am I right now? Imagine, for instance, approaching yourself and asking yourself as if reaching out to yourself for advice. If someone presented your life to you and asked, quote, what works and what doesn't right now, what would you tell them? What would you tell them objectively? What would you tell them unbiased? Well, you'd most likely say, well, you don't seem very happy with this. You need to improve that. You need to get that toxic thing out of your life. You need to have more of this in your life, wouldn't you? Take my situation, for instance, my bad back. For months, I've been pretty much constant pain. Pain sleeping, pain standing, pain sitting, pain moving, just pain, 24 hours a day. At times, I'd feel hopeless. At times, I'd feel furious. At times, I'd feel exhausted. At times, I'd feel depressed. At times, I was very much afraid. And I kept feeling those ways, coming and going out of these desperate feelings, dreaming of relief, of some kind of release. But for months, it never came. So eventually, I had a choice to make. Keep whining or fix it in any way, the most responsible way necessary. My body was telling me that I was avoiding a hard truth. In our lives, we generally cower from hard truths, don't we? We lie about them, we hide them, we make excuses. But eventually, if bad enough, they come back stronger and more capable until eventually they floor us, they embarrass us, they hurt us. But they also teach us, don't they? They teach us about our own vulnerabilities. They teach us about our fears. They teach us about what controls us. They teach us about our desires. They teach us about our humanity. They teach us about our mortality. And we can just go on hurting forever until we finally muster up the cur courage after years of hiding, lying, making excuses, and we say, fine, I'm fucking listening. So, you just told me a very long and hard story about a whole series of things that your body and mind have had to endure. Emotional burnout, exhaustion, health scares, depression, anxiety, doubt, and I'm sure a whole other lot of things that you've forgotten, that you've just gotten used to and now you take them for granted. Now you want to objectively ask yourself why to every one of those issues with respect, of course, with time. Don't flash through it quickly. Dig deep into one of these points and give it the time and care that it deserves. Give yourself a long, detailed answer based off of your experiences. Feel free to bitch and complain about it. Feel free to feel sorry for yourself. Feel free to go on a tangent about it. Get it clean out of your system. Filter out all that garbage, all those garbage thoughts, and eventually you'll find yourself at an honest core to the problem. Sometimes, actually quite often, once you've worked through the issues thoroughly, you realize that the core answer was deceptively simple despite all of the suffering that it has caused. But don't take the simplicity of it for granted. Simple problems can reap long-term and severe repercussions if ignored 
long enough. But once you see yourself, once you know yourself that little bit better, you'll have a tangible challenge ahead of you. And knowing what the source of the pain is, is honestly the most empowering and liberating feeling you can get. You're no longer the victim of some elusive and invisible foe. You're looking square at the problem and you can now work out a logical strategy to fix it. Maybe that fix will take time. Maybe days, weeks, years. But you know that moving forward, you'll only get better so long as you address it with determination and responsibility. That's far better than sitting in the dark suffering without any means to escape it. Take my back, for instance. Although I haven't seen that MRI yet, so I don't know exactly what the issue is, whether it's skeletal or muscular, neurological, hormonal, or whatever, I do know that the most common cause of back pain is weak supporting muscles. And a little update, if I can go off on a tangent, I did get my MRI, L4, L5 herniation. Nothing, nothing too... Nothing too dramatic, your standard, standard herniation. So there you go, we got that update. But more often than not, it's a weakness in one of the largest muscles of the human body, the glutes. Your lumbar spine compensates for weak glutes and eventually buckles under the strain and bang, herniation. So think about that for a second. Over the years, I've had pretty debilitating back issues on and off, bedridden for weeks or months. I've suffered in terrible pain that would shoot down the back of my leg or my butt or my knees or my calves or even down to my feet. My girlfriend would have to do most of the heavy lifting because I simply couldn't manage it myself. It could be, it could be frustrating. It can be embarrassing, humiliating. Sometimes it worried my kids a little bit when they saw daddy walking around in pain. I felt depressed sometimes. I felt hopeless. And this could go on for months if I let it. And all the while, there's a very good chance that all of this suffering was due to one seemingly insignificant and easy to look, overlook issue. I had a weak ass. <laughs> I'm laughing because in that context, it sounds funny, doesn't it? But knowing that means that I now have a game plan, a strategy, something to blame, a means to an end. I'm not just afraid to re-injure myself when I get careless. I have a means to prevent it from happening once the acute pain subsides and I can start gaining mobility. Right now, you're suffering and lost and frustrated and hopeless. But in reality, you need to get to the root cause. And in the end, you'll find that weak muscle in your life, that weak muscle in your mind, that weak muscle in your social life, and you'll know exactly how to strengthen it. And when you do, you'll have a feeling of empowerment. You'll have a greater sense of control over your own fate. You'll have a greater sense of respect for your own complexity. And when you feel like you just can't make heads or tails over things, that's where a counselor that you mentioned can be your best partner in arms. That's where they can point you in the right direction because, well, that's exactly what they're trained to do. And don't worry for a moment, you are going to be just fine. Just become more actively involved in your own fate. Don't let your fate happen to you. And that's it, that's the message. And again, I want to send a huge thank you to you who wrote this to me. I'm sure many of you down below in the comments are going to mirror that appreciation as well. And of course, I love you all with all my heart and happy painting. Take care.